So in this video, I'm going to explain to you how you can start to build your resilience to anxiety, how you can shift from being an anxious person to someone who copes well with anxiety. And this is really going to help you understand how to do that. So listen up, let's dive into it. Before we do though, make sure you're subscribed so you get all the updates and you can see all my new tips as I help you with this. Because when it comes to our mindset work, we've got to come back to it on a regular basis. Otherwise, you'll just watch this video, you'll go away, you'll forget about it. So subscribe, make sure you're also tuning into the Anxiety Reset podcast where I have much longer episodes on this stuff. The more you can absorb this, co this content, the more you will benefit because our mind learns through repetition. Okay, so let's dive into it. It's really important to understand that just because you have experienced certain things and you have behaved in certain ways and you've thought certain thoughts that would fit the, the description of anxiety or high functioning anxiety, which is the kind of anxiety I like to work with. That's where we, uh, you know, tend to get perfectionism all out of control we need to be perfect we tend to doubt ourselves we go into self-doubt spirals imposter syndrome overlaps here as well that's that feeling like you haven't really deserved your accolades your achievements maybe the role you're in at work and people are going to find you out that you actually don't know what you're doing this is something that affects a lot of women with high functioning anxiety because we're really hard on ourselves we tend to be high achievers but also be so mean to ourselves. We have this inner critic that's berating us and it's not a lot of fun. There's not a lot of satisfaction and fulfillment in that. And what I love to do is help these women actually achieve a life they really want, not just based on trying to get someone else's approval, not just based on what society says will make you happy, but what you really want, because there's so much more available for each and every one of us and you damn well deserve it. And that anxious voice might be telling you otherwise, but it is not true. Anyway, going back to what I was saying, even though you might have had experiences in your life that tell you, oh, I have anxiety because maybe yesterday you woke up and you felt anxiety buzzing in your gut and then you started to have anxious thoughts and then you knew you were going down this irrational path and you uh, started to go into a spiral and you told yourself you're not good enough and you told yourself you're not smart enough or you're not pretty enough and the cycle goes on or you found yourself all wound and tense and you can't relax because what are you worth if you're not being productive if you're not working really hard and doing lots of stuff even though you've experienced that it doesn't mean that's who you have to be. We get to at any point change the story. You have this incredible brain. Can we just for a moment acknowledge how amazing our brains are? We have a process in our brains. You know, they used to think our brains were fixed. They used to think that's it. You get the brain you got and that is it. Now we know through tons of research, we have something called neuroplasticity. Your brain can change itself. You can change your brain. So the way your brain is currently wired is not how it has to continue going. And we've all experienced this at some point, and I hope you have at some point, where maybe you have had a thought and there's been this other part of you that's questioned the thought that said, oh, I don't know if that's right. Maybe you've had this little dialogue with yourself where you've tried to calm down your anxiety and you've tried to think rationally. So if there's the anxious thinking and then there's this other part of you that's trying to think rationally and calm you down, you're starting to be aware that there is a conscious part of you, a part of you that kind of can take control of the wheel. And then there's, there's fear and anxiety. And it's that conscious part of us that is your power. This is where you can change it. This is where you can start to turn it around. You just need to know the skills and the tools that will take you there. I go through all of this in the Anxiety Reset Program. But you can build your resilience. So one way we can do this, because I know we love the how, we love to know how to do this because that's how we can, it's sort of like we believe it more easily when we know how. So this is how I do this for people. We start to work on our physical resilience. If you are sleep deprived, 
you're going to be more prone to anxiety. Your brain won't function as well. And it's going to be easier to be in that fight or flight mode. It's going to be easier to see threats. It's going to be easier to feel unsteady in your life. If you are not nourishing your body correctly and getting all the nutrients you need, your brain can't function well. You can't send messages and signals through your brain. That electrical system becomes interrupted and not functioning at its optimal level. When we start to work with these things, this is what I mean when I say building your physical resilience, your nutrition, your sleep, your hormones play a huge part. And if you've listened to those episodes before, you should know um, how important your hormones are as well and your gut health. Everyone loves the gut health. Your microbiome is sending signals to your brain. It's telling your brain how to regulate those calming chemicals in your body, in your brain. And if we don't have the wrong balance of bacteria, it can interrupt that and make it much harder for ourselves. So these things are really tangible, aren't they? We can really work with that. And this is why I love it, because it's not something esoteric, even though I love talking about working with our thoughts and trusting in the universe and connecting to your intuition, you can start with this really solid framework too. So you can build your resilience and you can start doing that today. This is not something you have to wait tomorrow to do or, or you know, for the right time. You can literally start changing those little habits. Can you get to bed a little bit earlier? Do you need to block out the room so that you sleep better in terms of the light pouring in? Um, is it that your pet keeps running into the room in the middle of the night? Does that have to happen? The amount of conversations I've had with clients where it's like, oh, but I can't because my cat runs into the room in the middle of the night. Well, close the damn door. Put the cat in a different room. I'm sorry, but your sleep is far too important. You'd be surprised how many ways we block this off from ourselves and we tell ourselves it's not possible. Move yourself into the realm that this is possible for you. It's just a matter of working it out. There is a solution. You just haven't figured it out yet. And if you need more help with this, this is why I have the Anxiety Reset Program. So go check it out if that resonates with you. So I want to just reiterate that these are simply skills you learn. It's not rocket science. It's not going to take hours and hours of your life to learn this. But if you're currently struggling with your high functioning anxiety, and it's something that is really impacting you on a regular basis, part of that is literally because you just don't know how to drive this car that is your mind and your body. And once upon a time, you didn't know how to drive a car maybe now you do, or maybe, you know, you can put this into another context, like riding a bike. Now that one doesn't work so well for me because actually when I first learned to ride a bike uh, and the training wheels were taken off, I gave up and I didn't learn to ride a bike till I was 15. So that phrase has never worked well for me. And even now I don't have a lot of, oh, no, I've got more confidence these days, I suppose. I could ride a bike if I wanted to. It's just not my favorite thing. Isn't that funny? I've still got a bit of a fixed mindset around that. Anyway, awareness is key. Um, but it's something that I just gave up because and told myself, I'm not a bike rider. Other people do that, not me. And all it would have taken was an open mind coming back to practicing it, learning the skill. And I would have been able to ride a bike just like anyone else. But it's funny how we limit ourselves. But the, this is the same thing with anxiety and learning how to build your resilience. You just need to know how to do it. And you need to come back to it again and again and again and practice it and really immerse yourself in that knowledge, really, you know, combining because we can't just do the physical stuff as much as I adore it. And I love that we've got this tangible things we can work with your sleep, your nutrition, your gut health, your hormones, um, exercise, movement, all of that stuff is amazing and very, very important, but it doesn't work without also the mindset component. It doesn't work if you're constantly still thinking thoughts like I'm an anxious person, there's something wrong with me, uh, I need to be working really hard to be valuable, um, I'm not allowed to rest, Why, what, what am I going to do? I, I don't like being alone with my thoughts. Keep thinking those thoughts, that stuff isn't going to work as well. If we combine it all together, then bingo. That's where we're on the money. That's how we get results. And that's how you reset your anxious mind. That's how you achieve mastery with this. That's why that's, these are the things that I offer and what I help people with. So embrace that growth mindset, embrace that ability to tell yourself, well, you just haven't learned it yet. 
you know, so many people come to me and they say, I've tried everything, Georgie. I don't know, like I've done the self-help books. I've, I've gone to therapy. I did a, an eating plan. I changed what I eat. You, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's no help for you. And it, you'd be surprised how much we tell ourselves that there's something wrong with me. Like I'm the one that's got the problem. Everyone else is fine. Just like me riding the bike. I'm the one that can't ride the bike, but everyone else can. I know I can, I'm perfectly capable of riding a bike and you are perfectly capable of learning the skills of building that resilience to no longer be impacted by this anxiety, to be able to, just like I do when I feel anxiety, kind of be like, oh, this is no big deal. Okay. So there's an anxiety here. This is temporary. My, there's a part of me that's relaxed about it, even though there's another part that's, you know, all worked up, I can very easily move through that moment. And I, it feels graceful. It feels easeful. That is possible for you. You can do that too. You just need to know the skills to get there. So understanding your brain is neuroplastic. It can change just because you've experienced anxiety in the past doesn't mean you'll continue to. It just means we need to start building new neural pathways in your brain. We need to start telling yourself new thoughts. We need to start rejecting and not accepting and paving over self-critical thoughts, the stuff you're used to thinking, the limiting stuff that keeps you stuck and starting to move into a place where you tell yourself every day you're healing, you're getting better, you are loving your life, you're learning to love your life. Moving in that direction is how we get results. And it does really require you to move away from the identity that you're an anxious person. I mentioned in our last part that this is something that we go through in the very first week of the program, understanding and, and de reducing the identity that you are an anxious person. It is fundamental to you getting through this and resetting your anxious mind. So take that away with you now. I hope that's been super helpful and I'm excited to dive in to our next part as well.